to be forgiving of others? Mm -hmm. Certainly. God was certainly forgiving of David, the one forgiving us every day, goodness. To seek God first. Um, treating everyone with respect. Absolutely. Sacrificial. Mm -hmm. I think it requires some vulnerability. Like being humble, right? Melody. I think we can look back at um what it, what they entitled David as a man after God's own heart. So a pure heart would be a heart that's after God. Giving without expecting anything in return, being generous. Mm -hmm. Being trustworthy. Mm -hmm. being happy being happy mm -hmm. joyful i'd even say happy is i was uh, we, my boys and i when we talk about it we talk about being happy is your circumstances joy is what you've got in your heart you just you're just joyful i don't know how to explain that <laughs> loving others unconditional love mm -hmm. obedient For me, I think to live with a pure heart is to recognize the Holy Spirit that's in us and to allow the fruit of the Spirit to rule in your heart. This is not a talking point, but as I sat and listened to everybody, <laughs> give different characteristics of a pure heart. I mean, it sure sounds like God's heart. Sure sounds like what I imagine and what I know to be true. You know, unconditional and loving and oh, goodness, well, the whole list what we went, we went through. I was kind of thinking um, along the lines of uh, uh, an analogy related to jewelry, um, looking for something that's made of gold. Um, and we, we really like pure gold, but sometimes we get... Um, gold plated and you know looking at the differences between a pure gold and a gold plated that it's something through and through it's not facial it's not, exactly. not put on a happy face for because it's it's sunday everything's good everything's fine we all look good and pretty for at least an hour and a half on sunday <laughs> This I was thinking about Nancy's probably. devotion today. And Nancy, in your devotion, the little boy asked how many days until Christmas. And he wanted to know because he wanted to know how long he had to be good. Yeah. Now, it's like with us, okay, it's like, okay, we have to be good. And it's really hard to be good every day. Um, so um, trying to be as good as we can because we love the Lord, not because we want presents on Christmas like the little boy. <laughs> right. I hadn't read that yet. That's no, I, I don't want to open that one up. That's funny. So discuss David's request to have God renew a steadfast spirit within him. First, what is a steadfast spirit? And secondly, describe one's life that is motivated by a steadfast spirit. Um, what is a steadfast spirit? When I, um, y'all might remember this for those of you that were, um, in my Luke Bible study, or as we talked about the steadfast. And um, it's interesting that in the NRSV version of the Bible, which is generally considered the most academic or scholarly, um, in seminary, I was always expected to use the NRSV if I was going to quote scripture or use scripture. Um, so it's my favorite version, and it's the preferred version we do in worship. You know, whenever in the harbor of the sanctuary, whenever we have scripture, it always comes from the NRSV. And that's because um, the source documents that the NRSV is translated from are some of the oldest we have. And as much as we like the King James Version, the, uh, the King James Version uses source material from the medieval ages. It's translations of translations. 
whereas the NRSV uses source material um, from, from way before that. So it's considered a bit more um, academic. All that to say is that in the NRSV, the word steadfast occurs over 200 times, and it's almost always attached to the word love. Um, just steadfast love, steadfast love. It's a phrase that in the Old Testament and the New Testament comes up a lot. So to me, to be steadfast is, is, is something that is firmly and, and always rooted in love. Um, it, steadfast, we know it means unwavering, right? It means resilience. It means to endure, to be strong. Um, you can't do that, right? If, if your foundation isn't love, right? Love Christ and love of neighbor. So that's my two cents. Well, I, I, I'm more simple. I just think of being focused, focused on God. I kind of look at it like Jane does. I, I look at it as relying on God instead of relying on self. I think steadfast, um, you keep on keeping on. Um, you don't divert, you don't get distracted. You, like Jane said, stay focused, you stay on the path. Um, kind of like taking a trip. If you um, take a side road, then you're gonna take a little longer to get where you're going. If you stay on the path, you'll, you'll get to your destination. to learn and to grow in the spirit. You know, I think of it as the, you know, I think a lot about, um, you know, God that, that, that is, I see in here, unwavering, unswerving, but really just always with us. You know, steadfast is, is it's the same, no matter today, tomorrow, it was before the pandemic, God was the same as he is in the middle of it, as he is at the end of it. And, you know, the alpha and the omega, so to speak, God's always here, whether, whether we're listening and engaged and talking with him or not, he's here. That's steadfast. Yeah, and I think Bobby mentioned, you know, God was here before all this and now during this, but God wasn't caught off guard. No. So if we can realize that, then maybe, you know, maybe something's happening here that we need to be paying attention to. And I think that's sort of what's step When we see God as steadfast, we can do that better. Good point, JT. Very good point. So what does someone's life look like that's motivated by a steadfast spirit? What do we want to get to? I think it's somebody that is uh, diligent in church and prayer life, devotionals, and just walking the path and uh, just, you know, staying focused on, on the Lord and what he wants us to do and do his will, too, and go out and spread his word as well as his will and help people wherever you can. So. I think it's um, looks like someone that's created some holy habits. Mm. That's good. Good, good phrase. I like that. <clears throat> Anybody that's been in a small group with me before, even a men's Bible study, has heard me talk about. I, I had a man in my life, a very, very, very close friend, Leon Bond, who. Uh, um, it just, it, in my mind, encapsulates steadfast spirit. He was the same. I worked with him. He was the same at work. And we'd go out and hang out afterwards. He was the same afterwards. He was the same with his family. He was full of God and God's love. He was the same at dinner. He was the same in a restaurant. I mean, that was when I, when I think of what does God and a person look like it was Leon and he'd probably be, I guarantee he'd be embarrassed for me to say that about him, but he was, you know, he just embodied that fast spirit, knew that, that uh, God was bigger than whatever we were tackling, whatever way, you know, he's in the highs and the lows and he's there. So. Sounds like he made a big difference. He did. Yeah. 
I haven't seen him in years. But you know, you know those people. You 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 know those people when you come come across those, and you you, you think, and it's cliche to say, you know, if you're if you've got Christ in you, you should look different. And but but you do, you do when you're steadfast and joyful, and you've got God in you. you it, it comes out and looks differently to people if they're paying attention. And I think in my case, that's what I strive to be. I think I fall short in a lot of ways, but, and I look at other people on this call that I look up to and, uh, you know, they're there and I think I'm working there. It's a journey. I mean, I'm not there by any means, but Amen. I'm getting closer. So. Studfast means being committed even during difficult times, not just during good times. Uh, I, I mentioned in uh, Men to Men last week, a good friend of mine was diagnosed with uh, leukemia and um, well advanced. And he, he commented that he's in a win-win situation. Mm. He wins if he dies. He wins if he's healed and can continue to serve the Jesus. So, you know, I think being committed and steadfast during difficult times, oftentimes we waver. And being steadfast means unwavering, just like you said, Bob. What a good outlook your friend has. I mean, like win-win and what yep. is fun. And we, that, that is great. Okay. Well, how will having a steadfast spirit help us along the giving discipleship journey? Well, it helps me focus on the needs of others and not myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reminds us that we should put the kingdom first and not the world, worldly things that we want. Mm -hmm. And I think it reminds us that being renewed, we give off the top, not what's left. So, uh, you know, because usually what's left might, might not be as great as what's off the top, and it's, that's the way we need to do it. I've found if it comes off the top that you don't miss it at all, but if you wait till the end, you've used it up. Mm -hmm. You've spent whatever <laughs> it is, but if you give it up, if you give first you don't realize you know you don't even sort of miss it that's true but there's an awful lot of people that are afraid that they won't have an abundance if they do give and i think that um being steadfast and trusting will get you over that fear over yeah. that hump and allow you to say, okay, I'm going to give, you know, sacrificially, and he'll provide. There it took me does. a long time for my faith to be mature enough to get that. I think the steadfast spirit helps. Somebody said it, it remembering that it's there's more out there than just me. I mean, especially right now, when we're so over the last six or eight months, we've been so um, isolated almost. You know, I mean, it's so you know, you've almost been everybody's been looking out for themselves for the health reasons, and and, and understandably so. But it's easy too to get insulated and get shut off from the world and forget what else is out there and who needs you know what golly we i've got it pretty good there's there's a lot worse out there that that uh you know people that are in worse situations that could use it more and if we're steadfast steadfast and connected to god and, and remembering that there's others out there that, that we, we could help I'm grateful for each day absolutely one thing i know this church did was they mentioned that if you were um, eligible to receive the stimulus check um, from the government because of COVID, that if you didn't really feel that it, you needed that check, that you could donate it to a special fund um, that was COVID related so that this church could then take those funds and specifically apply them to families that were critically 
affected during COVID because of their um, maybe loss of job or greatly reduced wages in their job or whatever was going on. And I know this church really um, stepped up to the, up the plate on that particular thing. Yeah, I was thinking that um, it's how you live your life. Um, you can live your life thinking, well, what if this happens? Or what if that happens? Or what if I need to be planning? What if, what if, what if? But we can also um, take on the attitude of God will, God does, God has, instead of saying, well, what if? Because we right. know God always. Amen. Amen. That's a good thought. That is very good. And that attitude really improves our relationship with God. I, compared to old friends who bring the same thing to me every time, you know, those friendships that fall into place versus the ones that sort of change. And I want my relationship with God to be the former. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like, I like my relationship with God to be the, the old friend that I haven't seen in a while. And I walk, you know, three seconds with him, we're back walking step in step and remembering. So absolutely. Hey, I think it's about being optimistic Nancy, you mentioned what if, but if you're optimistic um, and you look at what if, what if I gave sacrificially? What if I um, helped the homeless? What if I led a Bible study? What if? So there, there, there's a lot of uh, being positive about what God does in your life and how he shares abundantly with those that are steadfast and, and are committed and unwavering. I think you're hundred percent right, Mac, because it's, you know, we'll talk about it in today's sermon that it's, mm -hmm. this isn't, you know, uh, all finances. This is, you know, being renewed in spirit and heart and in mind. And, and, you know, one of the, the fruits of being connected with God is, you know, we do help, we step forward and, lead a Bible study, we help the homeless, we build a house, we, you know, help out. That That's the fruit of being steadfast with God. We help on the Renew Project, right? Or we help on that. <laughs> when I was listening to uh, JT's sermon this morning, what came to my mind was a, a pastor, a new pastor who dressed up like a hobo or a bum mm -hmm. and went to church and he sat in the front row and everybody looked at him funny and turned their nose up at him. And then when the, when the uh, mission spokesman got up and said, well, our pastor was supposed to be here. This guy stands up and walks up front. So <laughs> can you imagine how that would make the congregation feel and how that could be, Hey, a, a slap in the face. Let's wake up and, um, be renewed in spirit because God still loves us regardless of how we, what we do. I've heard that story too. Mm -hmm. So lastly, that kind of, that kind of tied in well, Mac, when talking about, uh, describe what restored joy looks and feels like. What's restored joy look and feel like? Seeing a, man, seeing a man who has spina bifida get up and walk, that's restored joy. It's restored a lot of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, would, I would say for myself, you know, whenever I feel the closest to God, um, it's almost like it's the key to um, others, being in service to others, doing something with other people. So I think a restored joy would be more than just a personal inclination or feeling. I think the outward sign of that would be, um, you know, some kind of loving relationship with uh, uh, either a fellow Christian or someone in need. I think restored joy looks to restore joy in others and looks for 
is to restore one's community context. It's, you know, it, it moves beyond the personal and the emotional to sort of outward expressions of faith, love, and, and, and commitment that way. So I think the simple act of building somebody a, real, a wheelchair ramp, I think that's restored love in action. I wrote down, and when I thought about this this week, I said, inherit in joy is the sense of delight in God that can cause our heart to smile even if things on the outside seem to be falling apart. So um, even when things are going bad, uh, looking to God, you get joy. You have a joyful heart. I, think I that, also uh, learned yeah. that... Um, in the Old Testament, the word joy is used 93 times, so I figured God really wants us to be joyful. Now, I think about how it feels to be forgiven, to move from being ashamed, then mm -hmm. uh, I broke somebody's window and they said, well, you're forgiven. It's a really good feeling. So. <laughs> You know, Pastor Will used a window in his uh, message today, and when he was uh, using it about, you know, cleaning our, um, our sinful hearts, like, you know, you're washing a dirty window. So I was thinking about God's Windex and how, you know, we can uh, use God's word uh, and know God's love uh, to kind of wash or clean the windows of our soul or to wash our heart. That's great. I like that. The um, actual verse says, restore to, me, restore to me the joy of your salvation. So I think about, um, reflect back on that moment. I actually made the decision that I needed Christ in my life and try to capture what that meant at that time and just reflect on that because the so often we get so far away from that, we take it for granted that we made that decision and that we invited Christ in our hearts and that he's been working. Hopefully we've allowed him to work in us and we're different in a new creation. And to reflect on that should bring us joy. I don't think you can hide joy. So I think then it becomes apparent to those around you, whether it's your fellow Christians or those who are still lost in their sin. And I think back, I think they sang it last Sunday, they'll know they're Christians by our love. Mm -hmm. And so I think we become like a light um, or the light that God wants us to be in this world and it will draw other people to him through the Holy Spirit. So I, I don't think you can suppress joy. I think it's very evident in, in how you live. Makes me think of another little song. This little light of mine. Mine, yeah. <laughs> That's a good <laughs>